everyone, I'm Ashley and welcome to my YouTube channel where we are going to be adding a dash of new life to this $15 thrift store fine dresser. Really quirky, a little bit weird. Let's go ahead and get started. This dresser was in great shape, but just outdated. The hardware on the left was not the style I wanted, but I liked the hardware on the right. I had a really hard time coming up with a design plan for this because it just wasn't symmetrical and I love symmetry. You're gonna hear some of the struggles I had when working on this dresser in this video, and I'd love to know if you would have chosen a similar design if you were doing this dresser. I started out by cleaning the entire dresser, but know that I also clean after I finish the dresser and I'm putting it all back together. That's actually when I do the deep clean. This part is just getting the grime off the exterior, preparing it to be sanded. After removing the hardware from the drawers, I moved on to scuff sanding the body of the dresser. 220 grit sandpaper is perfect for scuff sanding because it still leaves a smooth surface, but roughs it up enough for the paint or primer to grab onto. After I finished scuff sanding, I wiped down the entire body of the dresser with a damp cloth to remove all that excess dust. And then used my shop vac to get into the crevices to remove the dust there. I usually leave my drawers in and spray my paint, but in this case my initial design plan called for the drawers to be left solid wood, so I used some tape and my kids old school papers to protect the inside of the dresser before I sprayed any primer. I used a water-based primer in my spray gun and it was very thick paint so I used some water to thin it. This will help it come out of my sprayer a little better and create a smoother finish after it's sprayed. After I sprayed my primer, I moved on to working on the drawers. I first started by using my carbide scraper to remove the old finish. This also helps remove that layer of grime that comes with just old furniture and makes it faster for sanding and less waste with sandpaper. Afterwards, I grabbed my orbital sander and used 120 grit sandpaper and sanded down to raw wood. There's actually a lot of finish left after my carbide scraper and that is because I have not changed my carbide scraper blade, which I will do. I sanded the top, bottom, inside, and outside of the drawers just because it needed a refresh because it's a pretty old dresser. I grabbed some wood putty and filled in those hardware holes on the drawers that I will not be using the original hardware with. This is great stuff stuff to use. All you do is mix it together and fill in the holes. I like to tape the back so that none of the putty comes through. It takes about an hour or so for this putty to dry, so I will let it dry and move on to something else before I come back and hand sand over it to make it a nice smooth finish. So I grabbed those other drawers that have the wood slats in them and hand sanded in between those areas. I just used an old sheet of sandpaper, folded it in half, and sanded until all of the finish was removed. By then my primer was dry and I moved on to using a fine grit sandpaper and a sanding block to lightly sand the primer before spraying my paint. This isn't necessary, but sometimes your paint will have a little texture to it and this will help knock any of that off. So it was time to move on to painting the dresser and I had some leftover paint from my recent master bedroom makeover and thought it would look great on this dresser. So I stirred the paint really well and grabbed a paint strainer. I use a paint strainer anytime that I go to use my paint sprayer because it filters out any unwanted lumps caused by dried paint or really any other particles that might have gotten into the paint. 
And you can kind of see here why I use paint strainers. There's some dried latex paint that was caught by this paint strainer and it would have ended up in my paint sprayer had I not used this strainer. So then I started spraying the paint on the dresser. You can see that some water droplets ended up on the dresser and I just kind of wiped it off. To prevent this happening to you, I'd recommend using a cloth to wipe off your nozzle before starting to spray. If you're looking for a beginner friendly paint sprayer, this is a really, really great one. It's a Home Right Super Finish Max one. I'll link it down below. It is my favorite sprayer. I've owned a couple of different brands in the past and this by far is my favorite and actually the cheapest one that I've owned, but it works the best in my opinion. So after the paint dried, I needed to visualize what these raw wood drawers would look like in the dresser. And I took a step back and I actually did not like that design at all. So I decided to embrace the asymmetrical design of this dresser and paint only the left hand side drawers. So I began adding some primer over this raw wood using the same primer that I did for the actual body of the dresser. After the primer dried, I grabbed my paint sprayer and sprayed a coat of paint on the drawers as well as a second coat of paint on the body of the dresser. And in between coats of spraying, I leave the paint in my canister. I just unscrew it to let out that pressure, screw it back on, wipe off any of that excess paint on the nozzle, and then take some aluminum foil and cover that top so that it doesn't dry out. So I decided to do a white wash on these wooden drawers. So I just grabbed some whitish paint, added some water to it to really thin it down and went ahead and applied that with a paintbrush. And a white wash will just lighten up that wood. It was really yellow for me, so I wanted to tone that down. You just wipe off that excess paint, but I realized that it was really not changing it, so I went ahead and added another layer of this white wash, let it sit for a little longer to really absorb and dry a little bit longer before wiping off that excess. I was having a really hard time visualizing what this dresser would look like, so I went ahead and put the drawers in, took a step back, and said, this is too white. It needed to be a warmer tone, so I went and added a stain over top of that white washed wood. And once I had all of those drawers stained, I took a step back again and realized I didn't like this stain either. So it was back to the drawing board and I had to sand down this whitewash stained wood, unfortunately. Again, sometimes this is just the way design plans go when refinishing furniture. And if you follow me on Instagram, you all helped me figure out this new design plan, which I am so thankful for because I was in a little bit of a stuck place mentally. And most of the suggestions came through and said, you know, go darker with that stain. It'll be less of a contrast and add some legs and make sure to paint in between those wood slats. I think it'll tie it all together. So I decided to do all three of those suggestions and this was the first step. I grabbed some Provincial Stain by Minwax and applied it to each of these wood slatted drawers. And while that stain dried, I decided to go ahead and flip the dresser over and look to see how I can add some legs to this dresser. I'm going to take some scrap wood that I have and build some support beams here and here and there so we can attach the legs onto. This is the scrap wood I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna cut this length, I'm gonna install it on the back and screw it into the sides and even the bottom to make it nice and strong. And then put in boards to attach the front to the back and then those are where the legs will be attached. So I measured the height and the length of the scrap wood that would go across the back of the dresser. I clamped the wood down on my work table and used my circular saw to make the cut. 
I grab my pocket hole jig that will create pocket holes that I will use to attach the wood to the dresser. To ensure this piece of wood is extra secure, I used some wood glue, put a bead down the side there, and then attached the wood. I used some pocket hole screws and drilled them in each of those pocket holes on both sides of the wood. I followed the same process to do those two strips of wood that will then hold the legs. So it was time to finally add my legs. And the way that you do this is take that round metal part that you see that I have already attached to the legs. This is incorrect. So I eventually had to unscrew that metal part that you see there because that long piece is going to go down into the boards. But before I drilled those holes, I wanted to make sure that they were the correct distance and equal to each other. Because if you don't, when you flip it right side up, those legs will look a little funky because they're off center. To drill the holes, I used a drill bit. I actually used the wrong size the first time and had to grab a bigger one that would fit that metal piece and go down into the hole where the leg will screw into. These legs, for some reason, didn't come with the screws pre-installed, so I had to install them myself. However, this isn't something you'll have to do, so I didn't even record it. So I followed the same process for each of those legs, though. It was finally time to seal the dresser. I like to use Minwax water-based poly. I buy it in a gallon size because I use it on a lot of projects. So first I strained it and then just added a little bit of my paint to ensure there was no streakiness once I sprayed it. This is a fun tip that I use on almost every project, even in light color paint. And because I had added that paint to that water-based poly, I had to seal the wood drawer separately. So I just used a foam brush and applied the same water-based poly on each of the wood drawers. And because I was using half the hardware with new hardware that I purchased, I needed them to match. So I just used some rub and buff on the existing hardware, painted it on, and it actually matched perfectly. This stuff is actually really cool. I'll have it linked below. I then added some drawer liners to each of the drawers and a quick reminder of what the dresser looked like before and what it looked like mid-design and what it looked like now. I seriously love the design so much more and I actually like the asymmetry of it. I did forget to film that I painted in between those wood slats with the same color that I did in the dresser. I think it ties it all in nicely and those legs are stunning on it. It gives it a nice height and pulls in that wood and paint look perfectly and check out that shine on the top especially from the sealer it gives it such a good protection and looks so good too and with every piece of furniture i like to include a little pack which includes the original hardware if i don't use it the furniture care card which i'll link below where i have it on my website and a template form if you want to use it as well some extra touch-up paint and then a little deodorizer that i get from amazon to help with that paint and sealer smell Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for future furniture makeovers.